Good morning, everybody. I wanted to do an updated uh, home studio tour because I've just kind of cleaned it all out and um, organized it more for my watercolor supplies. I had been doing a lot of stamping before this, and I have sort of begun to move away from that and in more into actual watercolor as my main medium. So I wanted to do a little updated tour. So this is the door to my home uh, studio. It's a corner bedroom in the upstairs floor of our house. So when you come in, uh, I can't really open the door all the way because I have stuff behind there. So I'll show you everything in just a minute, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a round the room view. So you can kind of just get a quick glimpse of the way the room looks right now. And, uh, take a good look because it's not this clean most of the time but there's the wall again so that's how it goes so we've kind of got this perimeter set up and I like having a big open floor space in the middle it just makes me feel a little more clear and calm and I don't know about you I just find that I'm a lot more creative when my space is clear and organized and that doesn't happen as often as I'd like so I'm really enjoying this right now so if I start us over here behind the door so if I back up there's our hallway in our house and um, this is behind my uh, my door. This is the best way that I've found so far to store my large sheets of watercolor paper. I just know that there's better ways. I don't have flat files, so I just kind of keep them in the cardboard that they came in, and I label the top. So, for example, here was some that I ordered from Blick, and it was bright white, 140-pound rough, but it came all bent, and so Blick very kindly replaced it for me um, they just sent me a whole stack of new ones and said you don't have to return the old ones you can cut them up and use them for smaller pieces if you want so that was really nice of them so you can just see that I've kind of got all my natural white and then I even in the back have some 90 pound cold press paper which is very lightweight and not really great for doing paintings the way I do because I am a landscape painter and I do a lot of really wet washes, but I use the 90 pound paper for swatching and practice work because it's cheaper and it's just thinner, so it's not something that I'm gonna usually do a final painting on. Okay, so then back over here, next to the door, I have a rack that I love uh, for displaying matted prints when I go to art shows or craft fairs. It opens up and I can stack my prints in there and it's easy for people to stand and flip through. Likewise, I have um, spinning card racks that I got on Amazon. I got three of them and they are great. They are really good quality and nice for displaying their tabletop racks and they're really nice for displaying cards. Uh, so that's what I use there. And then I'll go through these bookshelves. These are just the Billy bookcases from Ikea and I have this corner set up here. I've got a lot of open space now because I have downsized a little bit and I'm actually glad that I've got this open breathing room finally because it was just getting to be way cluttered. Um, just a lot of excessive stuff. So now I'm just paring it down to what I really use and love. At the top of there I've just got little baskets that are right now mostly empty. I have a few cards and office supplies in the top ones there on the right. And then in this shelf, I have um, a basket of just odds and ends that I don't really know what else to do with, but I need them around. So I've just got them kind of contained and hidden up there. Uh, preschool supplies for my daughter. She's three, and this year we're going to start preschool in our school district, but I want to supplement it with some other things that I'm doing on my own. So I've got some supplies to do some literature activities and art activities and things, science and stuff like that up there. Um, then down below on this shelf and going across, I do have some watercolor pads and blocks that I use. So mostly I use Arches Rough and Arches Cold Press. Um, and I like the big sheets like I showed you earlier, but those are if I want a block or a pad. And these are other blocks that I have, and I've used them and they're fine, I just don't use them all the time. But Blick actually makes a really nice quality watercolor block, this cold press 140 pound premiere. They have a studio one as well, and I think that one is partly paper pulp, uh, wood pulp I mean, but this one is 100% cotton and it is really a nice one to work with. And then I've got a Fabriano hot press and an Arches hot press, and I don't use hot press a whole lot because again I'm a landscape painter and I really like the texture of the other papers better. Down here is where I keep my originals and prints so that they can stay flat. These are acid-free 
um, Profolios by Itoya, and I got them on Amazon, different sizes for different ones, but they're really nice because they come with these um, sort of sheet protectors where I can just put all of my originals and my prints and keep them flat. I, I store them flat so they don't curl and bend, and then they're nice when somebody orders something, it's ready to go. Uh, these are binders that I've created that have resources that I use in them and for artwork. So this right here is a palette binder. It's got my essential palette, paint palette information, including swatches and color studies on the paints that I use the most. I did a video on this and it is on my Facebook page and also, well, for now it's on my Facebook page. Um, I think it might be on YouTube. I don't know. I don't really update YouTube that often, guys. Sorry, I'm trying. This one is a binder full of finished card fronts that I use when I'm actually making cards. I try to print things a little ahead of time and have them ready to go so I can just cut them up and stick them together. Um, the purple one is tax information for my business, pricing and unit cost information, swatch color sheets as well, and also single color studies. And I've done, um, did I do a video on this one? If not, I will. This is my small but growing collection of watercolor and painting books. I just really find that it's nice to have print resources, although I do use a lot of online, mostly online things. Um, below I have paper towels for lifting um, paint off of things, and these are going to last me for the rest of my life because I don't use them very often, but they are by Viva because Viva makes paper towels that don't have much of a texture or a print on them so that you're not leaving any kind of um, funny looking print or texture on your paper when you lift off the paint. This is my die cutting machine called a cuddle bug. If you are a card maker, you will know exactly what this is. I use it to cut out card fronts that are not, um, so for example, if they, if they're like this one where there's not a clear defined edge of where to trim it, then I'll use a die that's exactly the right size to trim it out. Uh, this one, for example, does have it, it, the color goes right to the edge, so I knew exactly where to trim it. And so for that one, I didn't need to use that. But I use my die cutting for trimming out card fronts that are mostly white around the edge. Um, in these two blue bins there, those are for class materials, things that I use when I teach watercolor classes. And then under there are two more card racks. So I have three total card racks. Um, up on top, this is just mostly empty storage right now. I've got some extra drawers and boxes and bins that aren't being used right now, but I will hopefully grow into them a little bit. I'm really trying not to hoard too much stuff anymore. I just got overwhelmed by it when I was stamping. Um, so I'm trying. These are made for holding CDs and DVDs, but when I was stamping, I used them to hold punches. And right now they're holding empty water containers and pretty mugs that I keep because they are meaningful to me. Um, and then right now I just have extra baskets and decorative stuff up there, extra containers mostly. This here is a box of merchandise bags that I use when somebody places an order and I'm gonna deliver it by hand. If it's cards, I'll put them in these little bags and sort of dress them up a little bit. That's a collapsible water bucket so that if I'm painting on the go, I can throw that in my bag and then it pops up really big and I can fill it with water. A uh, photo of my wonderful sister. And then down here I've got color pencils for my three-year-old to use when she comes in here and hangs out with me. She's got a little stack of scratch paper up there that she can use too. And then these are um, toolbox organizers that I use for home office supplies. They're not all full right now. And then my watercolor pencils by Prismacolor and Derwent. These things under here are more coloring tools that I sometimes pull out and use. These are, um, it's a big, a larger collection of the Prismacolor color pencils. And then a Winsor & Newton Cotman pan palette. It's a 48 pan palette. This is a um, dot card board that I made with beautiful shimmery, metallic watercolor paints from Rivervale watercolor uh, which I just I love them they're beautiful and shimmery and gorgeous and there's a Gansai Tombi palette of Japanese watercolor paints which are more opaque they're really vibrant and pretty 
but they're more opaque and so I don't use them as much as I used to. These are just notebooks that I keep that I will use for different things. They're just personal notebooks. Some of them are empty and some of them have things in them. Um, these are my bookmarks that I sell. They're ready to go. Some of them are in sleeves and some aren't. Packing tape and materials. And then down below I've got two boxes of cords, cables, and devices. Um, just technology stuff that gets really cluttery and so I've just stashed it. Then over here I've got my white drawers and I'm just going to kind of get down here so you can see what they all are. They're all labeled and I just keep supplies that I need to be able to reach in there so that I can get to them. The top two are more for home office things and then here I've got um, double-sided strong tape for making cards, heat guns for drying my paintings, different kinds of glue and tape, my camera and label maker, I don't use my camera anymore. I have my phone and that's what I use mostly. Um, things that are applicators and coloring tools. I'll kind of zoom in and show that because that's kind of got some interesting things in there. I've just got some color pencil uh, applicators, masking fluid applicators, a big syringe for dripping paint down a sheet of paper and then the cleaner for it. And then natural sea sponges for ap applying texture to paintings. Miscellaneous supplies is where I keep things like um, magnet, big magnetic sheets, wax paper for special effects, you know, nails, just random stuff. And then I have pre-cut mats for inside cards when I put a white mat in there. Empty half pans and full pans for when I make my, my palettes, bags for storing things. I have a light box and the cable for it that I use for when I need to trace something. This is really nice and handy. Really use it um, quite a bit. Extra paint palettes for if I need a special project and I'm going to pull out that kind of palette for it. Command adhesive and picture hanging adhesive and wire. More miscellaneous supplies. I just have, you know, hardware for different drawer units and things and then bookmark tassels, basically. And then in my large toolbox, I've got things like my staple gun, a little toolkit, another double-sided tape applicator, pipettes for dripping water, things like that. So that's these, and I've got a laminator up on top. I do that sometimes for things I'm using with my daughter, just to laminate. It's left over from when I was a teacher, and it's actually really a great one. So then I'm gonna stand up and move over to my art table. I'm sorry I'm going really fast. I just have a lot to show and I don't want it to take too long. So, um, but feel free to pause and rewind or ask any questions below or anything like that. So I've got two tables in an L-shaped formation. Um, this black one is a folding table from Amazon, six foot folding table. Um, I actually got it for six bucks because I had built up quite a few rewards with my Amazon Visa, so that was really nice. Um, and it's not very heavy and it works really well. And that's the main table where I do my art. So over here I've got my desk lamp, which has a natural light bulb in it, daylight bulb, so that I get good natural daylight on my projects. Um, I, I have to zoom in because if I point it all blurs away. But uh, This is how I keep my Daniel Smith dot cards, and I have a free Winsor & Newton one that they sent me. But I just put them on binder clips and then on these pins because I was finding that in humid weather, uh, such as we have here in Minnesota, they tended to stick to other things when they were stacked in a pile. So now they're just kind of flowing free and I can unclip them if I would like to use them. Um, and then I have got some swatch, um, swatch charts, I guess you might say, that I use to refer to. I usually have three jars of water. One is for just clear water that I always have clear and the other two are for sort of warm color paint and cool color paint so that I'm, when I'm rinsing my brushes, um, it tends to, you know, not cross-contaminate with warm and cool colors, although, although they, you know, they do get mixed together eventually. The paper towels that I was talking about, I have some um, fragrance-free and unscented, I mean, alcohol-free wipes that I use for just cleaning up around here. And then these wonderful containers I got at Office Depot, they actually have a large compartment in the back and then four small ones in the front and I have two of these and so what I use them for is this left one 
I use that to hold scraps of Arches watercolor paper so I can use them for testing out samples of paint colors. And then I've organized my brushes. So I have large brushes in the back for washes, silver black velvet here, Princeton Neptune and Princeton Aqua Elite. These are the ones I use the most. And then on the other side I have other brushes, detail brushes. These are mini detailers that I'll use for tiny, tiny areas. Specialty brushes that might be for stippling or fan brushes or uh, scrubbing brushes. Just special things that I need to use them for. I even have some um, one stroke that I use for making tiny windows in in buildings. And then I've got non, these are other brushes. Some of them are good quality and some of them are lower quality, but they're just brushes that I don't use as often. Non-brush tools back here. So I have palette knives, a bone folder for scoring and folding cards, a hobby craft knife for cutting out things, um, and a masking fluid color shaper applicator thing like that. And then in the very back of this one, I have um, kind of color swatches that I am keeping just to refer to quickly. I do a lot with color swatches. I think it's soothing and it's kind of like something I just enjoy doing. It helps me get to know my paint better. Then I've got these little drawer organizers. There's three sets here and also three more sets over there. But these ones have mostly supplies that I use for painting and card making. So I have small tools such as a pipette, cut up credit card for scraping, a little sewing needle for adding uh, masking fluid in tiny amounts. Um, up here I've just got some other tools that I use. These are card fronts that I've already cut out and just I keep them in, an old, in a little photo book to keep them flat and looking nice. There's a little personal fan for if I need to dry something while I'm out and I don't have an outlet to plug in my dryer. Um, these are the flower palettes by Jack Richeson and I just love them. I use those for everything I do, almost every painting. Um, adhesives, black mats, and white inserts for when I make cards. They go on the front and in the inside of cards. And then I have envelopes, gold labels for the backs of my cards. And this one has, oh yes, acid-free tape for mounting to mats. I have a tool organizer over here, which is great. I got it, I think, at Home Depot. And I use that to store my tube paints. So, you know, I'm trying to do it by rainbow colors, but I just, right now, these are what I have in here. So that's how I store all of those. I don't use black, gray, and white very much, but I do have a few and I just keep them in there all together. Daniel Smith pans that I've already put paint into, so if I want to switch them out in my palettes, I've got those. And then other pans from other makers, such as Winsor & Newton, um, Da Vinci, and then I don't think I have M. Graham because they are so tacky and sticky when they're in a pan. Um, here I've got some pal uh, tube keys. You wrap the end of the tube around these and you roll it up so that you can get every last bit of paint out. That's really helpful. And I sometimes keep these little tubes that the paintbrushes come with so that if I'm traveling, I can kind of protect them. And I also always keep a couple extra caps from tubes of paint so that if while I'm working, I happen to lose a cap, then I don't waste a whole tube of paint. I can put a new one on there. I have some pens, things for drawing, different erasers for art. And then I've got my Prima palettes down here, which I don't use as often as I used to either now that I'm using professional paint. But I've got, you know, these three uh, drawers full of sets. And then up here I've got pins and staples, little swatch cards that I have made that just show me the color of each paint. Um, these are empty and I'll use those eventually. This palette is my studio palette, and it's got a lid on it to keep debris out. But basically, it's by Masterson. It's Masterson Aqua Pro Watercolor Palette, and I got it on Blick. Or maybe it was Amazon. It might have been Amazon, but they are both they both have them. I love it, except that it is plastic, and so the paint does tend to beat up and not really show how much color you've got. So... Um, 
but I got it for 10 bucks because again I had rewards so it's not it's not a huge deal if I don't use it as often as I wanted to for 10 bucks that's a pretty good deal for such a big palette then that's it for my art table on top underneath I do use the space under here for things too, so I'll just kind of point to things. I use gator board to stretch my watercolor paper, so I have those ready back there, and my paper trimmer. I have a acacia wood cutting board from Aldi, actually, uh, which is a really nice size, and I use it as a backdrop when I'm photographing cards for Etsy, because it's a pretty little wood background. And then I have... Um, that paper sack is for recycling and this is trash. But behind there, I have a big Sterilite tub and a cardboard box on top of it. And those hold prints, G clay, fine art prints that are matted and, and, and packaged so that when someone places an order, I have some of them already ready. Those are left over from an art show that I did. Uh, while we're under here, I'll just go across to the bottom of this table. And this is just where I keep all my card stock for making cards. So I organize it by warm colors, cool colors, neutrals, and then other cardstock or just, you know, overflow kind of goes right there. And that's under my home office table. So now I'll stand up and show you my home office table, um, my laptop, and then I've just got home office supplies running straight across here. And then as I go into these sets of drawers I have a postage scale so I can figure out how much things weigh when I'm mailing them my double-sided tape gun um, this drawer holds my external hard drive and cables for my flash drives that my favorite gel pens ink joy but they do leak guys I'm so mad about that they leak all over your pen cup if you're not careful after a while so I do store them horizontally in here and they're all by themselves so if that happens I don't have a huge mess Post-it notes. When I send an Etsy order out, I usually include a feedback request so that people can leave me feedback on Etsy. And uh, business cards for my, for my packaging. Um, this is empty, but I'm gonna be filling it with return address labels for my business. Logo stickers to put on the outside of packages. Shop small stickers to encourage people to shop small businesses and support small businesses. And then these are um, other labels that I put on the outside of packages, including these do not bend labels. So that's kind of helping me with packaging and shipping over here. Then as I move over, I've got my, my Epson V600 Perfection scanner, flatbed scanner that I use for scanning my artwork. And then... Um, my filing cabinets and this is basically an accordion file that we keep open on the floor and whenever we have financial documents or bills to pay after they're paid I put the date on them and I any information that I need to remember and then we file them so every year has its own file that's kind of our long-term financial paper storage system for our home and just uh, I keep it out because then I can add it add to it and we don't get papers piling up this back one is a tray that I keep um, income and expense receipts for my Etsy business and any other sales that I make or expenses that I incur for my business. Printer paper that goes into our laser printer right here. This is also a scanner and copier all at one. So that's great. Then I have these closets, which for now are going to stay closed. They aren't that bad inside, but they just hold a bunch of personal items. They're not really art related, all of them, although I do have some shipping and packaging supplies in there, but it's a little bit of a mess and there are some personal things in there, so I'm just gonna leave those out. And then on the back of my door, which I didn't show you before, but that's where you know, I keep my big watercolor paper back here. On the back, I have a shoe organizer and this is wonderful because I have it stuck up there with command adhesive and then it just holds travel supplies so little shampoos little bars of soap you know toothpaste chapstick uh, band-aids and i put those things some of them go in my purse too so i have little kleenex packages and just small items that i need to bring in my bag on the go and that way i can see if i'm running out of something also if we have guests stay over um, i sometimes put a little basket in the guest room that has you know lotion and chapstick and 
unused new things, of course, but for them to use when they're here. So that's really it. I hope I have really shown, oh, and I didn't show at uh, the bottom shelf, sorry. Um, but down here I have a um, binder that has acid-free sheet protectors in there, and I just keep artwork that I've made that really isn't my best work, but I just want to keep it because it reminds me of what I've learned. So I don't really throw a lot of my artwork away at this point. I may later, but not now. And then this box is a bin that holds items that I need when I go to a craft show. So there's a big black cash box at the bottom. There's a white tablecloth that goes over my folding table. Um, you know, things, signage, merchandise bags, things that I bring to art shows. So I guess that's everything. If I missed something that you're curious about, please ask. I'm very happy to share what, I, what I'm doing. And um, I just love my space. I like keeping it clear and organized and able to use. When I walk in here, it's just relaxing and kind of soothing and creativity promoting. This, by the way, in case I didn't mention it, it's just a piece of cardboard that I folded into a... Um, irregular triangular shape it used to be a diaper box actually and then I use it as a prop for my watercolor paintings so I can prop them up at different angles because I don't like using a big easel but here it can be propped up just a couple inches or if I turn it the tall way it can be propped up taller so it's just duct taped together but it works pretty well for me so that's nice I can get a little angle on my paintings and let the, the paint flow down um, and for those of you who are card makers, yes, this is a Stampin' Up! grid paper pad. I still have a couple of these left over, and I love them because they just sort of lift my work up off the table. They keep things quiet when I'm moving things around because I tend to paint when my daughter is sleeping and she's next door. And so that's why I try to keep things kind of quiet as I'm working. Um, I do use rags instead of paper towels because they are reusable and I don't have to keep repurchasing them. So these are bar mop towels. And they're stained, but this is a clean one, believe it or not. It's it's just out of the wash. Um, but, you know, the paint stains them. And I just keep one here for my brushes to dab off paint and water. And I keep a little stack of them back here so that when I need more, I can get them. Um, but they're great. So that, I think, is it. Except, oh, I did forget one thing, didn't I? These baskets at the top, these hold my tin palettes that hold the pans of paint that I have dried. And then this is just a bin that holds, you know, liquid and other tools, things that I need. So I've got masking fluid and a little bar of soap to um, coat my brush in before I use the masking fluid. I also have some containers of dish soap for that same reason, uh, blue masking fluid, toothpicks for applying masking fluid thinly, a really nice pencil sharpener that I love, coarse salt for doing special effects with my watercolor, um, the brush cleaner soap and watercolor ground to prime a surface that's otherwise not meant for watercolor. So there you have it. I think that's definitely long enough, about 30 minutes, guys. So if you have questions, please go ahead and leave comments, and I would love to hear from you. Thanks again for hanging in there if you watched all the way to the end and for sharing my space with me, and I will uh, talk to you all later. Bye-bye.